So the next segment was uh, suggested by one of our listeners and one of my mates over in the UK. We did our Christopher Nolan top five, what we thought was the best um, last week. And he messaged us saying, oh, yo, can you do your um, top animated? Mm -hmm. So I was like, sure. Yep. But uh, we'll do favorites because doing best is just going to be so hard. We could be here forever. <laughs> so favorites is a lot more easier. Um, so our top fa- favorite animated films from me and James. Did you want to go first or do you want me to go first? You can decide. You're the host. Take you, it away if you, you want. You can go first. You mean, want me to go first? <laughs> I'm glad this is favorite. Shout out to um, your friend that uh, <laughs> put the suggestion in. Um, and I'm glad that it is the favorites. If you're asking me to do my top five best animated movies, I would need a lot of preparation time to do that because um, I interpreted Nayan's uh, show notes as the best. It literally said uh, favorite. And I, I, was writing every, I was writing everything that could be on the top five, like contention. And I wrote like 15 to 20 movies. And I'm like, there's no way I can order this, let alone put five movies in here. But when it's favorite, I'm pretty, I'm pretty quite certain on how I feel about these movies. So we'll just go one at a time, starting yep. from fifth to first. Yep, sounds okay, good. Cool. Uh, fifth for me, Shrek. <laughs> Start right there. Fifth for me is Shrek. Actually, yeah. <laughs> the, the, there's no list of animated movies where I can't include <laughs> Shrek. I I love this movie so much, and it's one of those movies where I kind of I find something new with it each time. There's so many layers of like comedy to it, really kind of funny childish humor, and then really kind of dark adult humor. dark oh yeah adult humor. The the story's a blast. The characters are just hilarious together, and it's just it's just so fun. Um, that that's all I can say. I, I watched it. I actually watched it pretty recently, about a month or two ago, and I loved. I was watching it, and I was just loving it. It was just <laughs> so good and so nice. Um, so yeah, it's just one of those movies that I've loved ever since um it came out. I actually remember my first viewing of it, which I think I was like five or six. I remember I was I was throwing a mad tantrum to my mom because I wanted to see Lord of the Rings. Um, <laughs> and I was like, no, no, I don't want to see that. She's like, no, you're too young. You're too young. It's not good for you. Um, and then I didn't even know what Shrek was. I hadn't seen a poster or anything. And then I went and saw it and I just loved it. So, yeah, um, Shrek. What about why, why Shrek for you at first? Shrek is love, Shrek is life. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. And the memes. Yeah. And the memes. You know, it's a... I don't think I've seen a movie as memed as Shrek. Maybe like the prequel trilogy for Star Wars. That's the, yeah. <clears throat> I think those are the top two movies that constantly get memes and has mm. memes coming out of it. Um, but the soundtrack, and you pretty much covered everything already, but yeah. the soundtrack in Shrek is like an all time classic. You oh, know, yeah. like Smash Mouth and yeah. whatnot. Like <clears throat> watching that as a younger kid, you're just like, yo, <laughs> this is hype. Like just the first time you see. Shrek is just him kicking open a door yeah. um, to the toilet. <laughs> oh, it's just... It's just all... Like, everything vibes together so like well in that movie. It does. And like yeah. all the voice performances were fantastic. Even no, yeah. even like the side characters, like Jinji and um, yeah. people like that, mm-hmm. which all just nailed their roles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eddie, Eddie Murphy as Donkey is just perfection. One of uh, the best um, casting decisions in an animated film. Definitely. Yeah. Right. Your number four? Number four, Soul. Uh, this movie hit me to like my core, honestly. <laughs> and I, I've, I've loved the movie ever since. I, I didn't really know much about it coming into, into watching that movie for the first time, but that movie is not really aimed for kids in terms of its message and, uh, it's deeper themes. Soul hits me because it kind of, it came in the point in time in my life where I was kind of questioning where I'm going, what I want out of life. And then, cause I think I just, started i was in my first year of working a full-time position and working full-time a lot of my thinking is like is this my life now my nine to five monday to friday until i'm 65 and above and then i just retire like and i was having some really like not dark thoughts but not 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 good thoughts either about that and then this movie comes out and it, it teaches us that you know there's so much more to life than just those kind of things and following your dreams and the little things, the connections you have with other people. That's really what makes life life. So this movie came at the right time for me and yeah, I've, I've loved it ever since. And whenever I'm having an existential crisis, I'm going to put on that movie, <laughs> but I, it's not it's in the animation. 
there's a shot of New York City in that movie. Oh, the, is it the opening scene? Nah, nah, it's, it's in the middle. It's like this montage with like the, the emotional music. And the score is one of the best animated, by the way. And it's just like a, uh, and like bird's eye view of New York City. And I'm like, is, is this a is this a <laughs> shot or is this animated? It, it blew my mind. But yeah, what's your what's your number four? My number four. See, or my I don't have a real like a deep connection to my whole list as you did with Soul. It's all just like childhood stuff. Uh, my number four is Madagascar. Oh no! <laughs> the first one, bro. It's a classic, and it's the, great, yeah. the made that suggestion that we would un- completely understand because we were like Madagascar fanatics um, when it first came out. Mm-hmm. I think it's just I don't know why. Like, yeah, it's a pretty average movie, but I think just then watching it as a kid, it was just hilarious. Just mm-hmm. seeing like these four animals just like tear each other to pieces because they got kicked out of a zoo yeah, yeah. and whatnot, and then like seeing Alex the lion just like. Uh, tap into his carnivorous sort of mm-hmm. nature as yeah. an animal. It's just, yeah, I don't know why. It's just one of those childhood things that we just kept watching and watching and watching and watching. And then, like, yeah. obviously, when Madagascar two and three came out, we we all mm-hmm. went to the cinemas to watch it as well. Yeah, and I think it, I think it's um, King Julian that really got us into it. I think we all just really enjoyed him. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that song I like to move it was. Yeah. It was a bit annoying now as an adult, but as a child, like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was <laughs> so, a beat back in the day. But yeah, was. Madagascar is endlessly rewatchable. I, yeah. I, I do love Madagascar. It's just, yeah, not to that tier for me. Yeah. <laughs> Number four. Yeah. But we need more movies like Madagascar. Like just mindless fun. A- animated movies, yeah. Like not, oh, I don't know which one to immediately compare it to, but something like just good, like decently quality really fun kind of animated movies i feel like either animated movies these days are really bad or really good the in-between is a lot more rare these days in my opinion yeah yeah definitely like light yeah let's do top five most hated movies oh we hated movies or animated Anim- movies? animated movies <laughs> could be here for a while the <laughs> <laughs> uh, number three number three shout out to the mouse that's in here ratatouille <laughs> is my number three you only included that because you're afraid that it was going to come out of the cupboard and be like oi <laughs> <laughs> okay that, that's part of my reasoning but no honestly i i love ratatouille it's not one that i always watch a lot i think i, I watched it on the plane in our europe trip um <laughs> it's a great plane movie trust me but you know Ra- i think ratatouille is is one of the most underrated pixar movies at the moment, if anyone has it, in the, they have such a good, you know, uh, gallery of films that, you know, I, I, I completely get it. But yeah, Ratatouille to me, I, I, I love this movie so much. It's, it just explores creativity and human passion and through rats and cooking. It's taking very human elements, a, a part of, you know, the human condition and putting it into such a bizarre concept that could only be thought of by, why, by mixing kind of drugs together and, and visualizing it and hallucinating. Because how, how do you get to a film creation about rats wanting to cook? <laughs> like, it, I don't know. Where I it, don't know. Pixar, man. They're different beasts. And then, like, imagine, like, pitching the Ratatouille movie. Like, oh, yeah, we're going to have a rat who wants to cook. And obviously, you can't cook in a, in a restaurant in Paris. So... He is going to stand on some, you know, some guy's head and control him with his hair. Like, like the concept's <laughs> insane, but what they pull from it and the emotionality from it is on like a, a, a deeper level. So mixing such a bizarre concept and, and making it, it genuinely fun and all that kind of stuff, it's why it's one of my favorites. And I, I think as someone who's kind of, I perceive myself as quite a creative person um, in the way that I think. so. The movie exploring that is part of why I love it, I guess. Yeah. What about pick, you? We need Pixar to do more like creative stuff like that, you know, yes. out of the box sort of stuff. Yeah. Not, rather than not Figo and Waterboy. <laughs> as, <laughs> that's a good movie, but yeah. Um, what's your number three? <laughs> My number three is Pixar as well, Monsters Inc. <laughs> nah, Monsters Inc.'s good. Yeah, it's good yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think this is one that me and my sister always used to watch as well. Like, mm. But this entire list of mine is all just childhood based. I don't think there's a recent movie from like the past decade that's on this list for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was just I really loved Monsters Inc. I think it was just because I don't know, you know, just seeing the 
monsters in like mm-hmm. an animated form in a non scary sort of way. Like, yeah, they'd go do scares and stuff, but it was just more humanizing the monsters and getting stuff from their perspective. Yeah. I think that's what really made it great. And then obviously the, adding the element of Boo in there as well, the actual human and seeing these monsters like just as scared off a kid as kids are of monsters. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like real like, oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> We've got our wires crossed and whatnot. Yeah. And I think the comedy in the film is um really excellent as that's well. Great, you know? Yeah. Mike Wazowski is clear uh <laughs> Clear head and shoulders um, carrying that that whole film. <laughs> so, yeah, it was just Monsters, Inc. for me. Yeah. Have you watched it recently, like in the last five years? No, I haven't. No. I Watching it, I think I watched it a few years ago after me and Kyan had, had a big debate about it. There's a lot of, like, corporate, like, overlord kind of themes in it as well. And it kind of, as you grow up, you kind of learn about that stuff about corporate greed and all that it's flushed in that movie very uh, potently and there's just so much more of a deeper like theme to it. It's the same experience with the Incredibles. There's oh, so yeah. many layers to the storytelling, man. And as you get older, you kind of learn about that. And that's the ingenious of Pixar that's disappeared in the last 10 years. Yeah. yeah. It's just like appealing to both. Adult yeah. And kids. But now it's just, it just seems to be IP driven and yeah. kid friendly. Yeah. Too friendly. Yeah. Fucking Pixar. What's in second? Number two. Oh, <laughs> Shrek 2. <laughs> I, I, man, I love Shrek 2. I, th- I think it's probably one of the funniest uh, animated movies out there. Uh, again, the soundtrack is great. Uh, the story, in my opinion, is just as great. The, it, Shrek really went on a decline after this movie. But <laughs> I, I genuinely believe that Shrek 2 is better than Shrek 1. I like it a lot more. I remember seeing it opening night. Um, <laughs> it just it does everything that the first one did better, and then it adds like interesting characters like Puss and Boots, yeah. And then you know they, the fairy godmother, and putting magic into it, and, and all that stuff. It's just brilliant. I, I was obsessed with the movie when I was when I was younger. So diving more into that sort of um fairy tale sort of aspect. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So it's just it's just a blast. And I remember um. Oh, I I had a late shift at, at work once and I came home, I bought like a bottle of wine and I like, cause you know, my room and how my um TV is. So I stacked all my pillows like halfway in the bed. So I was like, really close to my screen <laughs> and I had a bottle of wine and I was like drinking wine while watching Shrek 2. And it was honestly one of my favorite watches of watching a movie in that room ever because I was just dying of laughter. I hope hilarious. it comes, it's not out on 4K, eh? I know, no. I know Shrek 1 is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have Shrek 1, but yeah, I was just watching that. Um, so, yeah, it's it's too good. It's so funny. Yeah, well, what's your number two? Shrek 2 is good. Not Shrek 2. My <laughs> my number two is The Incredibles. Oh, yeah. I thought I thought it has to be in there somewhere. <laughs> has to be in there, you know. It's, yeah. it's a superheroes. It's from Pixar as well. And just another childhood <laughs> yeah. movie of mine, you know. <laughs> it's just, oh, I think when I first watched it, I was blown away because I, with, or, from the stuff I saw, it's all always been like live action sort of superheroes. Mm. And then the uh, animated versions that I've seen is mainly like the Batman, like the Batman animated series type of um, films, yeah. which is great. They are great. Surprise, one of them's not on here, but oh, that's a topic for another day <laughs> with myself. Um, but yeah, with the I think with um, The Incredibles, I, the reason why I loved it so much is because it's based on something I've never seen before. Like yeah. like I said before, the mm-hmm. stuff I've watched was like the Batman and stuff. Sort like of new superheroes, is that what you're saying? New, new yeah. like original superheroes. And mm-hmm. that's what they did here. And then like, you know, each like uh, family member um, had a different power. And then like having like the world react to superheroes where they don't want them in that world as well, mm-hmm. which is really bizarre because cause if superheroes were around, um, everyone would want them around to, yeah. you know fight crime and blah 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 you know the spiel yeah but like in this film they're like not they have to be like super secretive and stuff like that and yeah i think just you know the way that the foot the main bad guy syndrome ties to miss incredible from his younger years mm-hmm. um it's just a perfect way to like have a villain as well and yeah yeah and the humor humor in this is also great i, I think this is like the peak pixar like that that sort of early 2000s period mm. in terms of like humor yeah as well Mm because like you know you got dash with this like quippy little one-liners that aren't that cheesy and whatnot and then you know you have the relationship sort of humor between um mr fantastic not mr fantastic (laughs) mr incredible and um, elastigirl as well 
Yeah, you, oh yeah. The Incredibles came out in an incredible time with um. Uh, don't laugh at that. That was not intentional. <laughs> um, yeah, no, just with with Pixar, I think like you had like Toy Story two, Monsters Inc., Finding Nemo, The Incredibles, all back to back to back. Mm-hmm. And you know, Ratatouille was in there. Cars is in there. Not not as great, of course. Not the not the same heights as the others, but still a solid movie. That kind of 2000 to 2010 for Pixar is just oh, too god good. Tier. Yeah, <laughs> god tier. Literally. My, for my favorite animated movie, I think I think might have the animated, same. You reckon? Unless... You know exactly what mine would be. Because it's in my top five of all time. Perhaps. But my number one is Toy Story 3. Oh, okay, no. No! You don't even have Toy Story 3 on your list. <laughs> Damn. Um... Top five of all time. Oh, I'm just thinking of yours. All right. Anyway, my one, my my favorite animated movie ever, Toy Story Three. This movie is probably, I, I would say, definitively top three best animated movies ever. For me, it's my favorite one, of course. It's because it caps off, and I guess I can't really say it caps off now. <laughs> uh, maybe Toy Story Four does dilute the impact of this movie now, but at the time. I knew this was something special because, you know, we had two movies prior to this of building up all these characters and understanding the relationship and the world which and they operate um, inside. And then Toy Story 3 brings up, it comes out like 10 years later and it kind of sticks with that timeline and it, it shows Andy being older and, you know, not being interested in toys. And you kind of, for me, I kind of grew up within Andy's timeline, if that makes sense. Like when he was a kid, that's when, when I, uh, when like uh, he was a kid in Toy Story 1 and 2, I was yeah. a kid. And, and then by the time Toy Story, came, Toy Story 3 came out, I was around, you know, like 14, 15, not playing with toys anymore. So you kind of just saw that relationship and then that you had that relatability to it. I think going to the um, kindergarten and having like, then be evil and like trapping them and stuff like that. And then the heist to break out of it. It's such a, it's such a fun thing. And then that last scene is just like emotional. <laughs> it, it hits to the core. It's pure, the perfect, bittersweet. Perfect ending for a franchise. It, it is literally the perfect ending. The, the so long partner as he drives off into the sunset and then Buzz just, you know, Pat and Woody on the back, on the yeah. shoulder. Yeah, it's just... Just incredible stuff. Honestly, wish that it uh, had kept it off in a way, even though Toy Story 4 was good. But, oh, man, I love that movie so much. Very curious about your number one, though. What, what have you got? I don't think I'm going to be surprised. It's Aladdin, as in the animated Aladdin. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very curious. Oh, you didn't have Lion King either. Huh, because it's favorites. Yeah, I, I know that, yeah. But I know you love all of these movies, so yeah. yeah. But top five is hard. <laughs> Aladdin is definitely up there. That's probably I think it's one of the first movies I've ever seen. Can't mm. remember because I don't know, thirty. Can't <laughs> my mind doesn't go back that far. But <laughs> this is the one that definitely sticks out the most. Like I remember, like my mum and my sister and my dad having to like hide the back then the VHS off it <laughs> because I oh, just because really? I just kept watching and watching and watching and watching. Oh, it. Really? Yeah, I was so obsessed with. Obsessed with Aladdin. Like there was a time where we had to dress up for primary school. Yeah, I went as Aladdin. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that time. Uh. Obviously, I wore a shirt. I couldn't wear that vest <clears throat> and be half naked. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I'll probably get in detention. But yeah, I loved Aladdin so much. It was like mm. it's one of the key um, films that I can relate to with my childhood. I think I just yeah. love it so much. Like Robin Williams as genie. Like you touched on upon before how mm. donkeys are one of the greatest animated casting voices um yeah. genie and robin williams is definitely up there definitely. as well yeah um i don't know yeah i think from musical as well because i now i'm not very big on musicals and yeah mm. and musicals are one of my number ones yeah yeah that is that's bizarre <laughs> but yeah i think the songs in there they were really catchy it was like that peak disney sort of time where like the yeah. songs are really good and mm-hmm. not quite forced and the story yeah. was great back then the animation or the hand drawing was great as well um, it's got great comedy, you know, with Robin Williams' genie in there as well. Like, yeah. it's never a dull moment. And then you also have Jafar, who was such a cunt, but he was a great <laughs> villain as well. You know, I, yeah, this is why I loved it so much. And yeah, I think it was just, I think it's probably because it's one of the first movies I recall seeing. That's probably why it's one of my favorites. Mm, yeah. Um, but quick question about that, because you can't really ask me about 
mine because they're not going to do Toy Story 3 in live action. But the Aladdin live action, considering it's your favorite animated movie, mm-hmm. how do you feel about the live action in terms of translating that movie into that format? As in when I got first announced when I watched it. When you watched it, what did uh, you think of it? I, I thought it was better than most of the live action ones. Like, obviously, it's not as good. Mm-hmm. Um, and it did try and change some things, which was weird. Yeah. But um, ugh, it's one of those ones where it's mm-hmm. just like, it can never, um, none of these live actions can ever reach the yeah. originals. So um, it's, I think it's probably one of the ones that I'll be uh, happy to rewatch. If I had to rewatch one, mm. like gun to my head, I'll probably pick Aladdin. Yeah. Just because I think it's one of the better ones. Um, that, that, that or Jungle Book. Um, well, Jungle Book. Oh, I love Jungle Book. That's yeah. a good one. Yeah. See, Will Smith in the trailers looked so shit, but in the movie, he was actually pretty decent. Like, he obviously he could never live up to the hypes of uh, Robin Williams, but yeah. like, he still did a pretty okay job. Yeah, he did. Um, yeah, we can yeah. do that. All right. So that yeah. is our top five uh, favorite animated films. Yeah. Do you have any other suggestions? Whether you're my mate or anyone else listening, <laughs> <laughs> give us a message and we'll see what we can do.